Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Dreamfolk Services Limited Q4 and FY24 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participants' line will be in listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. Before we begin, let me remind you that this discussion may contain forward-looking statements and may involve known and unknown risks, uncertainties, and other factors. It may be viewed in conjunction with the company's business risk that could cause future results, performance, or achievement to differ significantly from what has been expressed or implied by such forward-looking statements. Today, on this call, we have with us Ms. Librita Kalat, Chairperson and Managing Director, Ms. Jia Divan, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Balaji Srinivasan, Executive Director and Chief Technology Officer, and Mr. Sandeep Sonavri, Chief Business Officer. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Librita Kalat. Thank you, and over to you, ma'am. A very good evening to everyone. And thank you for joining us on the earnings conference call for the quarter and fiscal year ended 31st March 2024. We announced the financial results earlier today, and I hope you have had a chance to go through our financial results, investor presentation, and press release that are available on the stock exchange and on the company's website. I will begin by giving you all an overview of how the year has been for us and the initiatives we have taken. Post which I will give you a few highlights of the industries we are aligned with. This will be followed by my colleagues giving you further highlights and insights into what happened during the quarter and full year. Let us begin. FY24 has been an eventful year for the company. During the year gone by, we have achieved a revenue of Rs. 1,135 crores from Rs. 773 crores in FY23 recording a strong growth of 47% against the domestic air traffic growth of 13% as per DGCA. Our revenue has grown at a stager of 100% from FY22 to FY24, indicating our leading position in the lounge services aggregation industry. We facilitated approximately 11 million packs this year, which was 3.5 million in FY22 and 8.2 million in the previous year. We saw a significant increase in adoption of digital tools like web access and self-check-in kiosks contributing to 10% of our monthly taxes. For the full year, our gross margins were at 12.1% in line with our guidance of 11 to 13%. Our adjusted EBITDA adjusted for non-cash e-shop expenses was at Rs. 103 crores with a margin of 9.1% during the year. I would like to highlight that on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, driven by our concentrated focus on improving operational efficiencies, innovations, and collaborations, we have been increasing our adjusted EBITDA margins from 7.4% in Q1 to 9.7% in Q4, up by 226 basis points. The domestic to international split for Indian lounges is roughly 77 to 23, which is now at pre-COVID level and is expected to be at similar levels from here on. As it is now in line with the airport traffic split, I would like to reiterate that this split is for domestic and international terminals at Indian airports. Our railway lounge business has also witnessed a robust growth and has grown by 3.5 times in FY24 from the previous year. We continue to maintain 100% coverage in railway lounges as well, with the presence of 14 railway lounges across India. We have been focusing on adding new contemporary and other services to the bouquet of services we already provide. And our efforts have also translated into numbers. The services other than the Indian Airport Lounge now contribute 6% to our revenue which was less than 2% in FY22. 
We remain focused on increasing the contribution of these services and expect these services to contribute around 15 to 20 percent in the next four to five years. Our vision is to make premium travel and lifestyle experiences accessible to everyone and being recognized as a travel and lifestyle service provider. Some notable tie-ups during the quarter include a strategic collaboration with Red Peril, a pioneer in luxury lifestyle and personalized services. We have also partnered with eco-mobility to provide access to luxury car rental services to our Dream Folks Club members. Further, we have ventured into providing beauty and grooming services through our partnership with Look Salon, Sandeep will elaborate more on these collaborations. Now moving on to a few industry highlights. The global travel industry is a dynamic ecosystem encompassing various sectors and a place a significant role in fostering economic growth and cultural exchange. With the advancement of technology and globalization, travel has become more accessible and convenient leading to a surge in both domestic and international tourism. On a global level, as per industry reports, the global passenger traffic is expected to reach 3.2 billion in 2030 from 2.1 billion in 2023. This growth in travelers due to the rising eagerness to travel worldwide is leading to airlines recognizing the growth potential of the industry and ordering new aircraft to capture the growing demand. The total deliveries of aircraft between 2024 to 2030 is expected to be more than 12,800, which was 8,100 plus between 2017 to 2023. These factors, along with evolving passenger aspirations of a premium experience, are poisoned to significantly bolster the global lounge industry in the foreseeable future. Estimates indicate that the global lounge industry is expected to grow a CAGR of 7.5% from 2023 to 2033, as per Spherical Insights report from Jan 24. On a global level, Asia Pacific is expected to be the fastest growing market driven by significant increase in air traffic and investments in aviation infrastructure. Lounges continue to contribute high margins for airport operators, resulting in greater area allocations. allocations. We witnessed a significant increase in the lounge area by 7,000 square meters across all airports in FY24. The growth in the domestic passenger traffic in the aviation industry will drive the momentum for growth in the Indian lounge industry. FY24 witnessed a 13% year-on-year increase in the passengers, reaching 153.7 million passengers from 136 million in FY23, as per DGCA data. We have now surpassed the pre-COVID levels in terms of domestic passenger traffic, driven by an increase in both leisure and business travel. All these factors will lead India to become the world's third largest aviation market by 2024 to 25. Now moving to the credit card industry. The credit card industry in India has witnessed significant growth and evolution in recent years.
Ladies and gentlemen, we have the management connection back online. So let me start from the credit card industry. The credit card industry in India has witnessed significant growth and evolution in recent years. Fueled by increasing consumer spending, digitalization, and expanding financial inclusion initiatives. Confirmed. With the rising Please wait while you are joined to the conference. With the rising middle class and a rising number of digitally savvy consumers, credit cards have become a preferred mode of payment for transactions ranging from everyday purchases to high-value expenditures. As per RBI data, the number of credit cards in circulation as on 31st March 2024 has increased to 101.8 million, reporting a net increase of 19.3% from 85.3 million credit cards as on 31st March 2023. With the increasing numbers of cards, there has also been a noticeable increase in the average spend per credit card during the year to about Rs. 1.8 lakh in FY24 from Rs. 1.68 lakh in FY23, an increase of about 7.1% year on year. Both these facts clearly signal to the leading adoption of credit cards in the country which would certainly provide us with the necessary tailwinds to ensure a sustained growth in the business. Now to conclude at DreamFolks, we are actively engaged in strategic endeavors aimed at broadening our service portfolio. By leveraging our robust technological structure and esteemed client base, we strive to fortify our leading positions in the airport service sector. We are continuously extending our presence across the global through across the globe through the strategic partnership, thereby augmenting our brand recognition in new territories. Positive industry tailwinds, such as the increase in demand for travel, rising adoption of credit cards, and digital payment solutions, and growing demand for premium services, such as lounges and other lifestyle services, present significant growth prospects in the possible future. We have fortified our positions by partnering with global lounge operators, a move which will help facilitate scaling up operations and improving our margins. With our depth, technology, and resilient teams, we are poised to deliver positive performance in times ahead. We have been addressing the ongoing structural changes in the credit card industry, wherein the card issuers are moving to a spend-based benefit structure instead of a blanket card benefit. This change was implemented in Q3 of this year, and we will continue to see the changes across the providers until the spend-based system is in place. This structural shift in the model meant that our revenue growth was 47% this fiscal instead of the potential 65% growth in the absence of the model. In FY24, in revenue, instead of the 47% that, that we achieved, Given the macro development of the credit card industry, the higher base of the business model and an ever-changing industry scenario, we estimate that our revenues would grow at an approximate 20% CAGR for the next three years and maintain gross margin range of 11 to 13%. Positive industry tailwinds such as the increase in demand of travel, rising adoption of credit cards and digital payment solutions, and growing demand for premium services such as lounges and other lifestyle services present significant growth prospects in the foreseeable future. Further, I'm happy to share with you that our board has recommended a final dividend of 1.5 per share for FY24. We had paid an interim dividend of 50 paise in Q1 FY24, which takes our annual dividend to 100% of the face value. With that, I would now invite Sandeep to give you an update on the business front. Thank you, Livrita, and very good evening to everyone. I would like to highlight the various strategic initiatives we are undertaking to take dream folks to the next level. These initiatives underscore our commitment to growth, innovation, and diversification, and will be pivotal for our sustained growth in future. Our primary focus centers on the aggregation and integration of contemporary or other than lounge service to our portfolio. As mentioned by Libreta, we are transitioning into a comprehensive travel and lifestyle service aggregator 
offering a diverse array of services that cater to evolving needs of the consumer. This quarter, we have secured some major strategic tie-ups, expanding our service portfolio. First was a strategic partnership with Red Barrel, a pioneer in luxury lifestyle and personalized services. Through this partnership, the customer can enjoy ac ac access to across 3,000 plus exclusive members only club across 150 plus countries. It also provides front row seating at global sporting events like Olympics, Wimbledon, Champions League, etc. Also dining experiences at Michelin star restaurants, elite mobility options including a private jets and yacht and many more luxury services. We have also expanded our partnership with Ego Mobility to provide DreamFolks club members the access to luxury car rental services in more than 150 airports in India and abroad. This partnership presents DreamFolks with a significant opportunity to enhance airport transportation and travel solutions. Further, we have partnered with Look Salon and introduced beauty and grooming services to our portfolio of services, diversifying ourselves to a spectrum of services beyond travel which is lifestyle. In addition to integrating new contemporary services, we have broadened our aggregation efforts in lounge services as well. We are now facilitating access of lounges not only at the airport, but also at the railway stations, highways, visa application centers for which we have tied up with VFS Global, the largest visa outsourcing service provider globally. We are also in discussion to introduce the in-flight service, enabling travelers to choose their preferred seats and in-flight meals. This initiative is poised to redefine the lounge experiences, making, making it more in, inclusive and comprehensive. The outcome of all these efforts is evident in our performance. The revenue contribution from uh, services other than the India lounge services has surged from less than 2% in FY22 to 6% in FY24 and grew by almost 14x over the same period. This growth trajectory is very noteworthy, especially given the fact that we had actually grown by more than 47% this year. Our second strategic pillar is focused on actively diversifying our client base and reducing the reliance on one specific type of client. Our new go-to-market strategy involves partnership with OTAs, airlines and enterprises. This strategic pivot is designed to broaden our market reach and of course increase the brand equity of dream folks among different set of clients. To spear this, spearhead this diversification, we have recruited 16 talented professionals from the top business schools and engineering colleges of India. These individuals will help us accelerate our diversification effort and expanding our client base. While we are making effort to expand our client base, we are also focused on deepening our engagement with existing clients by offering broader range of contemporary services to them. By increasing the wallet share of our client, we aim to provide more value, strengthen client loyalty and drive higher revenues per client. This approach not only maximizes the utility of our existing client base, but also fortifies our market position through enhanced client satisfaction and retention. Lastly, we are also committed to expanding our geographical footprint. Our ambition to go global is taking shape with the recruitment of a very senior professional at our Singapore office. This strategic move is aimed at partnering the Southeast Asia market, leveraging the regional region's robust economic growth and dynamic business environment. Our entry in Singapore will uh, serve as a gateway to broader opportunities across the globe. To conclude, our strategic initiatives will foster sustainable growth, enhance client value and expand our market presence. By aggregating contemporary services, deepening client engagement, diversifying on client base on one side and expanding uh, geographically, on, uh, geographically on the other side, we are well positioned to capitalize on emerging opportunities and drive long term success. With that, I invite Bala to give an update on technology. Thank you, Sandeep. Utilizing the capabilities of the DreamFolks proprietary tech platform, we have seamlessly integrated new partnerships and offerings which enhance the benefits available to our valued beneficiaries. This opens up access to these new services on our platform of the premium, uh, premium service of Red Barrel as well as Eco Mobility and others. This initiative not only underscores our drive for innovation but also reflects our continuous efforts to create a comprehensive solution set for our clients and consumers. Our proprietary tech platform, which is developed in-house, 
empowers us to create bespoke products and solutions for our clients. In line with our commitment to maintain an asset light and lean org structure, a cloud-based platform provides clients and the consumers with clear visibility into benefits and services. Access to these services is facilitated through an omnichannel approach, which includes cards, card issuer apps, the DreamWorks app, the self-check-in kiosks, a web-based portal, all supported by our hybrid tech. A platform allows us to enhance the spending habits of our clients by offering precisely targeted products and presenting a high-quality CVP or a consumer value proposition to the end consumers rather than a one-size-fits-all solution. We are also observing an industry trend where most of our clients are implementing our spend and usage-based solutions to optimize the total cost of ownership of their product offering and launch new product initiatives. This continues to be a competitive advantage for us as we strengthen our deep integration into our client systems and thus our mode with our clients. To conclude, our tech remains one of our most vital assets and thus reflecting our commitment to continuously upgrade the platform. This dedication is rooted in our pursuit of providing appropriate and timely solutions to our clients and continuing to disturb the industry. With that, I hand over to Kaurav Jia to take us through our financial performance. Jia. Thank you, Balaji. And very good evening to all. Let me walk you through the financial performance for the quarter and the year ended 31st March 2024. I'll start with the highlights on the yearly financial performance. The company achieved a 46.8% YOY growth in revenue from operations to rupees 1,135 crores in FY24 as compared to rupees 773 crores in FY23. Gross profit was at rupees 137 crores against 128 crores in FY23 while gross margin was at 12.1% for the year as compared to 16.5% in FY23. After adjusting for non-cash ESOP expenses, adjusted EBITDA was at Rs. 103 crores in FY24 compared to Rs. 104 crores in FY23. This has translated to an adjusted EBITDA margin of 9.1% in FY24. Adjusted profit before tax was Rs. 98 crores in FY24, with adjusted PBT margin was 8.7% in FY24 compared to adjusted PBT of Rs. 100 crores in FY23. Our PAT for FY24 stood at Rs. 69 crores. PAT margin was at 6% in FY24. We continue to have a strong balance sheet with our net worth up by 50% to Rs. 236 crores compared to last year. Our cash and cash equivalent balance as at quarter end stood at Rs. 101 crores. Now moving on to the highlights for quarter 4 FY24. The company's revenue from operations for the quarter stood at Rs. 281 crores in quarter 4 FY24 against Rs. 238 crores in quarter 4 FY23, registering a growth of 18.2% YOY. Gross profit was at Rs. 35 crores while gross margin was at 12.5% for the quarter. The adjusted IPTA stood at Rs. 27 crores with an adjusted margin of 9.7%. The adjusted PBT stood at Rs. 26 crores with an adjusted PBT margin of 9.2%. Profit after tax for the quarter was at Rs. 18 crores. The company reported PAT margin at 6.4% for the quarter. ROCE and ROE as at end of FY24 stood at 38.1% and 34.9% respectively. Backed by our steady financial performance and the robust business model, we are confident of scaling up our business operations with our strategic initiatives along with a steady improvement in margins through internal accruals without relying on external sources of funds. On this note, now I will request the moderator to open the floor for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, 
We will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Sanidhya from Unicorn Assets. Please go ahead. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. So, firstly, my first question is uh, on the lounge uh, that we have, uh, I guess we have opened three or more, four new lounges this year. Is that the number right? Not really. So, okay. So, yeah. No, just to clarify, so we are not, uh, you know, in the business of op operating the lounges. So uh -huh. you're probably seeing some uh, new lounge partnerships that we have done where uh, where consumers can go. And uh, the lounges continue to keep opening and, you know, the the changes in the inventory keeps changing. But that's, a, you know, uh, that's just a business as yeah, usual. Yeah. As usual. Can you please explain me how to look at that number in the presentation? I see for it currently operating. Yeah, so the way we report the numbers is we typically say that we have got 1500 plus touch points, which okay. includes the all the locations the consumers can go, uh, which could be lounges or meet and assist points or spa points. So all the touch points together, we report a number. We don't explicitly say, but there are also mentions with for specifically for India lounges, there will be a typically a slide which tells you how many numbers are how many lounges are there. So just to add what Bala was saying, so for example, uh, for India, we talk about 62 lounges in airports. 65. 65 lounges, and yeah. um, uh, it's a hundred percent coverage what we say, right? So there are 65 lounges across the Indian airports wherever they are. So as and when there are new lounges coming up, that becomes part of our inventory of lounges, right? And this is similar to the railway lounges as well. There are 14 railway lounges right now presently in India, and we have 100% coverage as well. So similarly, in global market, we are expanding, and that's what if we have mentioned about Grey Wall and Plaza Premium. So these were two of our partnership in this uh, in FY24, uh, which has increased our network globally. So this is an ongoing process, and in India, as we claim that yes, it's a hundred percent coverage. So as and when there are new lounges coming up, it becomes part of the inventory. In global, we are in process of adding more and more lounges and uh, different touch points. When we say touch points, it would be meet and assess, the airport transfer, the spas, and the F&B outlets as well. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Second is on the lines of margin. So. I heard you saying that uh, 12 to 13 percent margin is what you're looking at. So currently it's not the case, uh, definitely. So what are the business verticals which we are looking into so that uh, there will be such margin extensions on a large, on the overall revenue base? Okay, uh, so a small correction here. Uh, we have been consistently mentioning our guidance of margins. Uh, gross margins from the range of 11 to 13 and I think uh, in the last uh, three quarters also we've been maintaining that and not 12 to 13. So we are well within the range as we uh, reported this year's full year margin at 12%. And what we said was in terms of, you know, one, the kind of services that we are aggregating and on the other side, the types of client that we are going to aggregate and are aggregating, that will help us actually improve our margin. That is what we mentioned. And uh, is it right that we are, uh, you are expecting the revenues to grow at 20% for three years? That's right. Okay, so we consider this year's 40% growth to be one off? Or there is still chance that we might just overperform ourselves? No. So this year we grew 47%, not to yeah. forget that we were lapping a lower base where last year the traffic had not fully recovered from the COVID. That is why you are seeing a 47% growth this year. However, if you were to look at the CAGR air traffic between say 23 to 33, it is projected to grow at a 15% ballpark number. So we will continue to uh, grow ahead of the industry or the air traffic growth in this case. Okay, and uh, lastly, uh, we have all more than 50% market share overall in the 
domestic launch market right so are we uh, considering to yeah no just to correct we have around 90% market share Oh, 90%. So, do we, uh, uh, do we, uh, will we be able to maintain this uh, beyond 2030, or do we see any competition coming in on this? So, frankly speaking, the competition existed uh, long back, and they continue to exist. I think you know what Bala mentioned in terms of our, uh, you know, solution, the tech solution that we have. the kind of integration that we have had with the bank actually gives us create lot of moats and that helps the banks to entrust on us and if you see in the last at least you know 7 8 years we haven't seen any dent in our market share we continue to in fact actually strengthen our position uh, if not only increase so uh, we do not see yes of course competition of course will come and go but i think as far as dream folks are concerned i think the market share has been very very consistent and just to add uh, also to see the positive side of this in terms of for the technology what uh, sandeep was mentioning uh, with the spend base we have actually now deeply integrated with our clients now this is actually a positive side for us and that is a stickiness what we have with the clients so i would say that uh, the way we have continuously maintained our uh, uh, leadership position in the market we will continue to maintain that thank you the next question is from the line of shreyansh mehta from equitus securities please go ahead yeah uh, thanks for the opportunity one uh, my first question pertains to you know the 20% cagr so how should one look at the volume and the uh, price hike see uh, cagr shreyans uh, we are talking about you know uh, next 3 years 20% which is ultimately beating the industry growth which is the air traffic growth no so, i mean i we will continue No, I got so what? What my I'll I'll put it other way around. So as far as FY twenty five is concerned, since you know we are almost at uh, the pre COVID levels in terms of the passenger, so how should one look at the FY twenty five number and FY twenty six if possible, uh, the air traffic? So fifteen percent. I I said uh, the uh, it is available in the common domain. Fifteen percent CAGR is the traffic growth which is envisaged. and i said uh, we will grow ahead of the traffic growth and that is why we said 20% in the next 3 years as cagr that will be our top line growth sure sure second question is you know in the commentary we mentioned about expansion in airports uh, closure to 7000 square meters so possible to give you know which airports are going for expansion area wise yeah 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 perfect so if you were to look at all the four major uh, metros i mean i consider hyderabad and bangalore also part of metro so let's see consider them as six if you were to see uh, currently you see a complete new uh, terminal which is in the form of bangalore t2 that is complete expansion despite the fact that you know all the lounges that were existing in t1 continue to operate so that is number one if you uh, have been traveling off late to uh, say t3 lounge in uh, delhi Uh, that is a complete new lounge that has come up in fact the t1 and t2 have also getting expanded they have already expanded as we speak mumbai is also uh, you know expanding uh, i spoke about okay goa has uh, got two different airports now and the new goa is uh, you know got the lounge earlier it was only one terminal and obviously only one so likewise i think most of the places hyderabad hyderabad yeah hyderabad as we speak has already increased uh, significantly the lounge area so in all uh, 7000 square meters of space approximately got added uh, in last year and i don't see that will come down because lounge as a uh, as a area for the airport operator is a significantly revenue contributor at, uh, at a high margin as we mentioned so we right. see that will continue to grow Sure, sure. So this is a number for S twenty four and not for twenty five, right? Yes, the seven thousand square meter addition is last year that is gone by till thirty first March twenty four. Sure. And any color on you know S twenty five? Any new airport which are going for expansion? Frankly speaking, if not, I think you know I would expect a similar growth or if not more because I I, I we we feel that. uh there are uh, chance that you know probably government would privatize another good 20 to 25 airports in the coming one or two years that will significantly increase the lounge area 
If that yeah. happens in FY25, good. In FY25, we also expect Jaiwar Airport. Jaiwar Airport, Mumbai, New Mumbai yeah. Airport too. And there are few uh, uh, airports which are under privatization under Adani. So there would be lounges coming up in these uh, airports as well. Sure, sure, sure. And ma'am, ma'am. So once you know, see this new airports, uh, especially you know, <clears throat> from Adani come, you know, go for privatization. Can we see similar thing, you know, which we witness in FY24, wherein the rentals or the camp charges are increased? I think the base is already formed, Shreyans. We spoke okay. about that in Q1. So the base is already formed. So the the sudden change happened when there was no base. The base is already formed. Now we all expect that, you know, whatever prices the lounge operator is going to charge will have a baking cost of these cam charges any which way. Got it. Got it. Got it. Sure. And one last question on the data day. So if I see, you know, FY23 or even for six months, FY24 and FY24, it says the data day seems to have gone up. Any particular reason for it? No specific reason, Shreyans, because, you know, it's not about just quarter to quarter, because sometimes quarter end, uh, you know, data is deceptive, while throughout the year, we see it reducing a lot, okay? So, you get to see only half year and the full year, while 31st right. March is also a closure for the banks. I'm, I'm sure you understand we work with all the large banks, wherein the processing of all these reviews and invoice processing takes time and especially the half year closure and year end closure also is pretty strenuous on them as well. So that's the reason you see these kind of variations. But I think between 20 to 25 days of the uh, cash conversion cycle is what we always work upon. Also, we are increasing yeah. in terms of size. If you were to really look at the sheer top line growth that we have added is close to 360 crores reals. I mean, with that, obviously, the you know, our clients will also have, uh, you know, a process in place where beyond a certain limit, obviously the approval process take longer than uh, what it is if the amount is below a certain threshold. I'm sure you'll appreciate that. Sure, sure. So because, you know, the reason is, you know, if you see in the net, net working capital days, if I just do a simple math, daters minus creditors, so data days seem to have increasing, whereas creditor days, that seem to have decreasing. So just trying to understand, you know, is there any specific reason, any one-off or, you know, how should one look at it? Okay, so, I mean, uh, these are two very different uh, credit periods which we are talking about. So credit, so payables actually is also dependent on our mix of the uh, regular vendors versus the SME vendors, right, small and medium enterprise right. vendors. And uh, I'm sure, I mean, during the COVID period, a lot of companies also saw that smaller vendors actually went and uh, took the registration of SME. While as they started scaling up, they have moved from, away from, uh, you know, MSME to the larger organization. So this blend keeps changing. And also when the operators also keep changing for us at the airport lounges, uh, if there is a MSME versus non-MSME operator, that also drives up our payable days because any small and medium enterprises, payments are actually uh, guided by the regulatory guidelines wherein we have to pay within a certain amount of time frame. Uh, while for the non-MSME, it is larger days. So as and when that mix changes, this kind of deviates a little bit here and there. Uh, while I see the receivables from a very isolated angle, from the point of view that whether it is a half year closure or a year end closure or any specific event coming in, say for example, uh, you know, any reviews happening or any larger amount of invoices getting processed and going through a larger amount of, uh, you know, in-house at the client's level approval cycles as Sandeep was mentioning. So these are very two isolated, uh, you know, events what we see actually and uh, but the way we see is that since we have internal approvals 20 25 days of uh, gap between the receivables and payables uh, it doesn't actually impact us more from the point of view of cash management got it got it sure sure i have a couple of more questions i'll get back in the view thank you thank you the next question is from the line of pritesh cheda from lucky investments please go ahead 
Yeah, in your best guess, uh, how far you are or how many quarters are you away from the 11 to 13 percent EBITDA margin that you're talking about? Because I think the fiscal year starts, the new fiscal year would have started and you would have negotiated the pricing with the bank. So based on that, how far you are away from that margin? Uh, so I think that I just want to make a correction. We were not talking about the EBITDA margin. We were talking about the gross margin to be between 11 to 13 percent. Okay. So how far you are away from the upper end of the GM and accordingly? There's hardly any expense below that. So how far you are away from that achieving that? I think we have already given the guidance uh, even in our last, uh, you know, in our Q1 FY24 results announcement and now also we continue saying that, you know, we would try and maintain our gross margin at 11 to 13 percent for a few years. And if so you look at our quarter four, four if you look at our quarter four gross, quarter four, gross, yeah, gross quarter margin, four. it's already at 12.5 percent, which is well within the range which we have uh, you know, given to so I'm just wondering, the hit that you took the last year, uh, some amount of it should rectify itself, right? Why are you now guiding for a much lower margin profile versus what you did just around the IPO? If you actually look at it, you know, the uh, quarter one, our gross margin was around 10.6, 10 by 6. And uh, whereas, uh, you know, the way we have grown and quarter four, we have actually done 12.5. So I would say that, yes, there is a recovery happening. But however, I would, uh, you know, want to give the similar guidance. Yes, we are trying to, uh, you know, with the different services, what we are adding in, in terms of, you know, uh, apart from the lounge services, and not only that, in terms of the client as well, uh, you know, we are also now exploring into uh, the enterprises. So these would be the factors wherein, uh, yes, so we would say that our gross, uh, you know, our margins would be much better. But however, the contribution from these services and the uh, new set of clients, I would say next four to five years, uh, you know, the contribution would be somewhere around 20% uh, uh, from these services. Where I would say that, yes, uh, you know, we would get back to our uh, uh, historical margins then. And this uh, other services are at what gross margin? So it depends from service to service right now. But uh, however, you know, we would like to give you the same guidelines, which uh, is around 11 to 13 percent, because we are looking at the overall margin. Okay, and uh, my last question is on the cash flow conversion. So, based on whatever working capital cycle that you would have incrementally, what will be your cash flow conversion of the EBITDA? Okay, so um, cash flow conversion, if you look at it, uh, from an EBITDA standpoint, we have um, recorded a cash flow of 97 crores against which we have a net cash generated from the operating activity of 22 crores. So close to 20 plus percentage is what is our conversion cycle. So this year, nine, uh, no, this year what was the operating cash flow? Uh, what, because what I see in the, yeah. yeah. 22 crores. Net, net cash generated from the operating activities was 22 crores this year. Okay, I'll take it offline, ma'am. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mosam Shah from Wealth Guardians. Please go ahead. Hello. Mr. Mosam? Hello. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask uh, the property technology platform that we have, have we registered and have copyrights for it? It is not patented, but yes, it is copyright. Okay. Oh, thank you. And also one more question. Uh, regarding the launches that we have opened on roadways and railways, do we have better margins, lower margins, or same as airport launches? Uh, we have better margins. See, our hero product is airport lounge. Any, any other services beyond airport lounge has typically higher margins uh, than the railway lounge. Uh, sorry, than the airport lounge. Oh, okay. So yes, Thank to answer you. your question, 
uh, yeah it is affirmatively yes higher margin oh. okay uh, and uh, also the high cash that we have on books that is um, i think more than 100 crores uh, any plans how we want to move ahead any acquisition or any thing for the shareholders or something yeah sure so we just announced a dividend payout uh, we also did an interim dividend payout in july and now we have announced a final dividend payout Uh, which actually is 100% of the face value of the share and uh, that would also be equivalent to 10% of the uh, free cash flow reserves what you are getting to see in the books of account apart from that as you know we are uh, we are we are growing and uh, trying to expand a lot in terms of other services in terms of other geographies we are also very active in terms of uh, finding out uh, new synergistic uh opportunities for acquisitions and that's where the uh, accumulated cash flow which we are generating would get utilized okay okay thank you so much thank you ladies and gentlemen you may press star and 1 to ask a question the next question is from the line of bala murli krishna from oman investments advisors please go ahead Mr. Bala, may I request you to please unmute your line and speak? Mr. Bala, you do not respond from the current participant. We will move on to the next participant. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Chawla, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, sir. You are audible. Yeah. thank you for the opportunity i just wanted to know uh, as dream folks is an aggregator so in the coming future let's say 5 7 years is it possible that you move to a piece model because as of now from your pnl i understand that you pay for the services and then the, you sell those services to the bank so and the bank pays you per person that accesses the lounge so is it possible that you only get the 100 rupees fee for how many people that travel and the bank pays directly for the rest of the lounge charges uh so to be very frank enough you know that is not the model what we work on uh, so i don't uh, foresee that there would be any change in our uh, business model it would Got be it. Uh, continuing in, yeah we'll continue in the mm-hmm. same way because the reason i ask this is uh, this leaves a lot of impact on the debtor days and the amount of debtors we have so that was the reason for this and moving on to the cash flow statement as i can see you have started making provision for doubtful debts so may i just get a sense of which are these clients for which you have been a little doubtful and you have started to do the provisioning for them uh that's just one client uh, from the tra- airline industry which has filed for the uh, you know uh, bankruptcy so there was a small amount of due over there which we are writing it off okay so going forward as you sign up more clients who are let's say corporates where you give those corporate cards and other flower services and all these services so can we expect more provisions to be made for those type of clients no because if you were to look at all these service providers are large enough we are not talking about you know someone who is very very local uh, service aggregate uh, service provider uh, when we say you know the florist is a omnipresent uh, company which is national at a national level whether it is uh, looks that we have tied up that we mentioned uh, it has more than 250 sorry 350 outlets across the country so on and so forth so these are all big companies big vendors and not really small vendors so i don't uh, foresee anything on account of you know uh, uh, debtors uh, you know all these uh, you know companies becoming debtors at any point in time at least i don't foresee that okay got it that is the and reason why we also choose uh, we are very very specific about the strict sls that we have and of course uh, you know the national presence is very important when we actually tie up unless we know that a certain vendor is very very strong in a particular geography maybe north india or a south india thank you the next question is from the line of bala murli krishna from oman investment advisors please go ahead hi good evening 
are you able uh, i think i am audible yes sir yeah 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 the question uh, which is uh, about to ask regarding this uh, international operation so since the listing you are planning to replicate the services in other countries in gulf or middle east something but uh, nothing is materialized but is there any further scope to get uh, some deals uh, or um, we can uh, draw from those uh, um, further plans of this uh, replicating uh, launch services in other countries sir yeah yes bala thank you yes we are as excited as you are actually you know so the issue is you know uh, like in india the adoption or the gestation period is uh, not uh, small while we have been saying that yes that is an ambition but i'll tell you that intent has got converted into action when we said that we have already recruited a senior resource who is based out of singapore office in, in in fact in terms of action last year april we took uh, we took a uh, you know office in singapore we have recruited a senior position uh, senior person based out of singapore however just to add to what you said we already had actually started getting revenues though very very small uh, in the country called malaysia in the last almost 6 to 7 months we are getting consistently on the technology that we have actually sold so yes i agree uh, i think you know it requires a little bit of patience but we are committed in terms of uh, resourcing that market to uh, get it to a significant uh, you know percentage yeah that's great and uh, one more thing on the roadway launches so we have just entered in this segment i think they may be in this quarter itself but uh, what is the uh, number of launches uh, how many launches are available and uh, what could be the scope of this uh, uh launches uh, increasing the number of launches for that yeah so great question in fact we have already added uh, someone uh, from the south company who currently has aggregated only two launches however uh, i do not want to really uh, dilute it by saying that it is two launch considering that you know in the coming 10 years we will see lot of electric vehicles on road and because of which uh the number of lounges on the highway will increase because imagine if you were to go from a point a to point b in between you will have to charge the vehicle and what do you do what if i were to give you a good space where you have clean toilets ac air condition newspaper and by the way you get a get to sip a cup of coffee i think you know that is going to significantly increase and lot of multinational companies are putting heavy investment the likes of a uh, geo bp tata everybody are getting into this so we intend to actually be the first mover advantage you know get the first mover advantage and want to really stay ahead of the curve we see huge potential in the coming 5 to 10 years in this case thank you the next question is from the line of shreyansh mehta from equiris securities please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity once again so now you know it's almost uh, two or three quarters that uh, are tie up with plaza premium as far as the international operations are concerned you know is through so how's the traction out there what are the rates offered by us you know and how are the banks looking at uh, at that part of the business uh, so shreyan sir you know there are two ways what we are doing with the global lounges one is of course you know we are looking at uh, giving this uh, benefit to the indian traveler as well as the focus is also for the international market as well right, right. uh in terms of the pricing i would say that you know it is uh, it was not in line with what we have uh, in the india market of course in india market we enjoy the best of the commercial because of the volume what we drive there and subsequently it will take time for us in the global market also to enjoy the similar type of commercials and once you know we start onboarding clients so the thing is that we are in process and as sandeep was mentioning about uh, you know uh, southeast asia market and middle east uh, what we have been doing and what we have already implemented so i would say that it would take some time for us to action it out in terms of the volume there and talk about numbers got it so now my, when i'm talking about the rates of it so i'm talking about the difference between ours and our competitor you know because we will be actually competing you know for that part of the business so as i told you sharan that you know the way we are actually today enjoying in india market the best of the commercial compared to the competitor 
So obviously in the global market, uh, yes, we are a little behind than the competition. Okay. Uh, I think once we start uh, building the volumes there, then we would enjoy the best of the commercial even for those uh, lounges. Got it, got it, got it. And secondly, in terms of traction, you know, the in, in the cards which we've introduced, you know, our own cards, wherein, you know, it's more of a subscription base. So how are things playing out there? So Shreyans, uh, we've been clear and categorical as to what is what are the objective of launching the card. The objective of launching the Dream Folks Club membership card was not to really focus on the sales. Uh, there were two main objectives and we are very excited to actually tell you as to what are the uh, objectives and how it is actually helping us. One is to drive the packages. The unfortunate part was that, you know, currently uh, one client will have probably two or three services, uh, you know, uh, offered, uh, you know, taken by them of Dream Folks and are offered to their clients, to their customers, sorry. However, we have arrays of services. We have probably say 18, 18 to 19 services, out of which only a one bank takes three services. The other bank would take only two. The other, the third bank would probably take again two different services. We wanted to increase the discoverability of our services. And imagine if the consumer is actually uh, going to our website and seeing that these are all the services that are provided by a company called Dream Folks, and these can be made available on the credit card. We, our intent is to ensure that, you know, the consumer also forces the client, our clients tomorrow to include these kind of services. And the banks will at uh, some point in time give these battery of services as a part of their CVP to the customer. So that is the main objective, and uh, you know we are seeing a uh, you know per, per, you know great traction. Uh, you know if you were to really look at the percentage numbers that Librita was mentioning, uh, mm -hmm. two years back it was you know less than two percent, and it has come to six percent. While it is very small, but majority of the six percent was accelerated because of the kind of services that we actually launched during our uh, Dreamforce Club membership. I mean, uh, I, we launched it, if I'm not wrong, in the month of October 2023, uh, okay. September, October 2023, December, yeah. And since then, the other services are seeing uh, quite a bit in terms of traction, especially enterprise. Got it, got it, got it, sure. And lastly, you know, I mean, it's almost a year that credit cards, you know, have been devaluating the points and, you know, cutting down on the lounges, lounge accesses. So now you feel, you know, we are almost through that rough patch or, you know, there is some more thing, you know, which is left and probably one or two quarters and we'll be, you know, back to normal. How, sh how, sh how should, you know, one look at it from that perspective? Yes. Uh, so you are right. Uh, right in the sense that, yes, uh, cost optimization at the end of client is happening, happened uh, to a large extent. But however, we are not through. Uh, in the coming quarter, we see that, you know, uh, two or three large uh, clients would also, we have already got the dates in terms of, you know, the spend-based solution that they have uh, adopted. And we are still yet to see uh, the, uh, you know, volumes that will get impacted. To my mind, I think we will see through this after, in, in the Q3 probably. So the volume will stabilize in Q3. The net impact we will be able to really measure in quarter three and onwards. Okay, so you feel probably in three, uh, the you know this things will be uh, happening in by third quarter or would play out actually in third quarter. So as we speak, it is happening. Uh, okay. Uh, in the last uh, one quarter, in fact, it started in the month of November, which is Q3 of last year. It happened Q4 also as we speak and it is happening in q1 fy25 and it will also happen in q2 of 25 fy25 that is why i'm saying got so it. it will happen uh, gradually till quarter and i think till quarter uh, two of this financial year uh, i think it will stabilize got it got it and in terms of market share you know because largely you know i mean it was hdfc and sbi if i'm not mistaken those two are largely true. So even if at all, you know, this two, I mean, whatever the banks are, they might be what closer to say 10, 15 percent. So do you think, you know, that would have any major impact as far as margins or overall competitive intensity is concerned? No. Uh, so while you have taken two names and I do not want to take further names, 
but uh, wow. there are few more clients which are significant in number in terms of contribution also they okay. are yet to uh, go to the spend based program and as i said it will happen as we speak maybe in q1 and q2 and it will have impact sorry what was your second question no no that that was the question uh, got your point yeah, yeah. so it will and uh, to, to that extent you know it will not impact the percentage margin it will impact the top line shreya got it got it it will not uh, impact the margins yeah got it got it got it perfect that's it from my side thank you and all the best thank you the next question is from the line of piyush kirpalni who is an individual investor please go ahead yeah am i audible yes sir you are audible am i audible yeah so i think uh, the question uh, yeah. which was asked by the last person is the same question so i was just seeing the revenue numbers so the revenue like have we started in june 21 with some 25 crores and it has been consistently increasing at till march 23 which is 238 uh means december 23 which is like 305 this is the first quarter march 24 where our sales have gone down to around 281 crore which i understand one of the reason is due to the uh, spend based programs and all so just want to know at one end we are saying it will be 20% cagr on the revenue side but due to this credit card ka the this cost optimization we are doing uh, are we expecting sales to go down further from here as i understand that quarter 2 or quarter 3 things will be stabilized so how do we uh, what guidance do we have on the revenue numbers because at one side due to this credit card uh, program cost cutting our revenue has dropped but at another side we are saying that revenue will increase at a cagr of 20% so how as an investor i should analyze or understand what's going to be happen in next one year yeah i think uh, i appreciate your question i uh, so uh, see if you were to look at uh, you know quarter 3 and quarter 4 which is gone by there also uh, some of the big clients adopted the spend based program but uh, while we were also little uh, uh, you know cautious as to what kind of drop that will have uh, in fact uh, to our pleasant surprise the drop did not happen the way we envisaged and i'll tell you why because consider a bank a doing the spend based program what happened immediately was on the day when they launched the spend based program and after a week or so they themselves realized that the other players that were there in the market started gaining share so from the lounge availing lounge as a benefit from the consumer side did not stop did not change to that extent yes it impacted there is no doubt about it but it did not change so hence the stabilization or rather offering this lounge as a service by other banks and other client helped us to actually stabilize and not really get impacted by the drop or rather the spend based program which was adopted by client number 1 so not to the extent so that is a good news uh, coming back to the other part of your question so even in q1 and q2 of uh, fy25 while there are two banks if they try to do simultaneously then we might see a little bit of impact higher impact however we are committed to the 20% growth cagr because of various reasons see we continue to uh, you know add lot of services we continue to have tailwinds the credit card industry is growing industry growth sorry the credit card uh, is growing at 15% the air traffic is growing at 50% the habit of consumer availing a lounge as a service on the card is very well intact if you do not provide someone else will provide that remains intact so i think that habit we are very confident won't change to that extent there will be a little bit of uh, you know turbulence uh, maybe for you know two weeks or three weeks till the time that you know i as a consumer when i realize that on my credit card if a bank or issuer is stopped giving me the benefit i will probably either do two things either migrate to other companies credit card or i might actually buy a higher variant and also as a habit instead of keeping four credit cards i will start spending on that particular credit card and to uh, to just inform you banks and clients are very very happy if you are spending on the same card and generating mdr for the bank 
they are in fact probably will reward you with more uh, lounges per probably quarter as probably what you are having currently. So banks do, do not want to really reduce this benefit. Banks are wanting to really give benefit to the deserving consumer. So it is actually that. So when I say this, it is going to find its own equilibrium and that equilibrium uh, cannot be really foreseen and that is why this uncertainty will have a little bit of impact. But we are committed to, uh, you know, a 20% growth uh, three years, as we mentioned, because there are a lot of other initiatives. We have hired uh, management trainees, uh, you know, from absolutely top class institutes, from IIMs, from IMT Ghaziabad, from MDI, and from, you know, graduate engineering training from, uh, trainees from the best schools. The whole idea is to leverage uh, manpower so that if they start actually uh, coming on board and start accelerating our, uh, you know, increase in uh, uh, clients like enterprises, this will help us get higher margins and also cover cover up to a large extent the volumes, the revenues. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take that as the last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to Ms. Librita Kalut for closing comments. I extend my sincere gratitude to all who joined our earnings call today, contributing to this very engaging discussion. We are committed to our business strategies aiming to deliver positive results continually. For any further questions or information, please contact our investor relations team at EY on behalf of the company. I thank you all once again for your time and participation. Do take care of yourselves and goodbye. Thank you. On behalf of DreamFolk Services Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.